family guys welcome back to another video i got a really neat one in store for you guys today i know we haven't had any super content on the channel for about a month and a half and there's been lots of really good stuff happening so the purpose of today's video is to get you guys fully up to speed on what's been going on my plans for the car moving forward so i hope you enjoy um, i'm actually looking at some of the content here now and just that quick two minute introduction that i gave you guys Kind of summarizes what we've done over the last month as you saw our engines at real street performance we tore into it i want to give you guys updates on that our transmission is at atf speed getting upgraded again more changes happening so guys all amazing news super pumped as i watch that quick two minute introduction i can't help but be crazy just grateful and thankful to have amazing shops fully on board with baltic super trying to make it the best it can be obviously real street performance ATF speed, um, having just the support of family and friends. As I see everyone here just laughing, having a good time over at the house, that brings me so much happiness, man. Having you guys, having the race family supporting the channel and backing us up. Lots of you guys have been reaching out to me, asking for updates and more videos and what's been happening with the car. So it means the world to me, guys. So we're gonna talk about what's happening with the engine, what all we have going on. Um, but before I get into that, I wanted to also show you guys another sequence of videos that I put together for you guys. Just kind of recapping the last year and a half that I've had with the car. The last maybe year and a half since we've had YouTube. Um, so just a lot of highlights from, let me see here. It starts off with, a I chose three quarter mile hits, guys. We got over a hundred quarter mile hits on that engine, that setup, um, and lots of them brought me endless happiness. We have Probably more than 15 personal bests over the last year and a half. I chose just three, one being Texas 2K, an 850 run at Texas. That was a personal best at that time. Followed by like two or three months later, we went sevens for the first time. I included that clip. Followed by just his last race against the Blue Mustang in our previous video, the really close side-by-side -side race. That's my current personal best, 770 at 183 miles an hour. So I included that one as well. And then followed by a lot of stuff that to me, Although drag racing is the bulk of what we do on this channel and what I truly love doing, guys, I also enjoy just driving the car and enjoying it as a whole. Taking it to car shows and just driving it to dinner, lunches, driving it everywhere. So there's lots of that. Clips, <laughs> um, there's a lot of funny clips on here, guys. Almost every time I'll take Baltic Super out here in my town to go out to lunch, a dinner, go anywhere really, almost always I would get spotted driving it on the road. and. I love that. I would get back home and open up Instagram and people would take pictures and upload them and tag me. And that means a lot to see that the car is recognized and enjoyed, man. So there's a lot of that. There's clips of me getting caught in the rain. Guys, I drove that car under whatever weather conditions I was stuck in. I drove it everywhere. Um, so there's clips of me being stuck in the rain, filmed by other subscribers that, that caught me on the rain. I have clips of me and my buddy Robert being stuck in the rain with no roof on the Super, just getting poured on. So here's a seven second car, just basically going through it all, just all the elements, having a great time, just clips of that. We did a really neat gender reveal for my sister. I threw that in here as well. Again, more clips getting spotted. Um, collaborations with that racing channel that came out freaking awesome. And then just a lot of freaking joy rides taken, coworkers, relatives, friends, smiley, just lots of crazy stuff, taking my baby for rides. Um, oof, surprising Jacob for his birthday, just lots of really cool stuff that to me meant a lot. Um, I hope you guys enjoy all those clips and on the flip side of those clips, I'll give you guys more updates on all the parts we're installing on the car and all the changes that are happening. Catch you guys soon. <laughs>
stuck in the rain in my waterproof Supra. Man, we weren't expecting this shit. Freaking Florida. Yeah, looking for a gas station quick. clips i'm sure there's lots of other really cool clips that i'm leaving out but that's just a quick recap man of a lot of the fun that we've had over the year and a half and like you guys saw although drag racing is a big part of the channel what i love doing and like every other drag racer right it doesn't matter if you run 15 seconds or a five second quarter mile time we're all in search of that 0, 0.00 the the unobtainable right we're all trying to go faster and faster and faster and that's totally normal. Um, and although I still wanna go faster than the 770 at 183, like you guys saw, just sharing the car with friends and family and going to shows and just doing the gender review, doing all these side things to me brings me so much happiness. So ultimately, although I do wanna go faster, I don't ever wanna turn Baltic into some trailer queen that has to get trailered to the track, much less push to the starting line, just make the one quarter mile hit and back on the trailer. I don't want it to be a car I enjoy a couple times a year. I want to leave it as street as possible. That car's got AC, sound system, powered windows. I mean, it truly drives like the day I bought it when it was all original. So I definitely want to keep that. So yes, we want to go faster and yes, we're making changes to go faster. But at the end of the day, this is 
a small displacement engine, guys. In order to go faster in a super, you have to go bigger and bigger and bigger on the turbo size. And as it is, is already pretty laggy. So we are upgrading the turbo, but very slightly. Um, I guess, you know what, now that we're talking about the turbo, we'll start with that. So the turbo that's on my car now has been on the car for about three years. This is the one, two, three. This is the fourth, this is the fourth turbo setup that I've had on the car, the fourth single turbo. I went from the stock twins to a Borg Warner 75. Um, that's a lot larger than a lot of people go for their first turbo, but it was okay by my standards. I followed that with a custom bill, billet wheel 76, 87, then a 76, 96, then I went precision 83, 85. And again, although this turbo is laggy, right? For, for street driving, it's still not terrible. Um, and for a next turbo, I st I'm still looking for more power with the fresh engine build. Guys, I've decided to go with the Precision 8685, just slightly bigger based on calling Precision and talking to them over the phone, based on research that I've done, talking to my tuner. The 8685 should be good for about another 100 wheel over the 8385 Street Fighter Turbo that I have now. If indeed that is true, 100 wheel is sweet, man. Those are great gains. The car's already gone. A 770, my goal guys going into this is I want a consistent mid seven second car. So a 750 can set consistent uh, with a goal. My new goal is to go a 730 at 190 miles an hour. So let's see if that's obtainable or not. Keeping the car as street as possible, but that's our goal. I doubt the turbo can do that on just boost alone, but my idea is to spray it on top, maybe 150 shot or whatever necessary to spray on top to make additional power. Um, I'd rather go that route than instead of just going in 88 something or a 90 something millimeter turbo and just doing it boost alone. Guys, those turbos, although they're great for drag racing and with a little bit of nitrous, they can get spooled off the line and it'll make the power that I need. I just picture them being so lazy for street driving. And like you guys saw, I enjoy driving this car on the street a lot. I don't want a car that only makes power at 7,000 RPMs or crazy high red line. Um, again, those large turbos will work great for drag racing, but I personally don't think they'll be practical for street driving or just everyday use. So for now, we're going with an 8685. As far as the engine, guys, I took the engine out of the car, knowing that there's a lot of really cool races the back half of the year. Florida 2K is the next race we really want to go. So Florida 2K, I already bought my ticket. Florida 2K, I would love to go to Maryland World Cup. I've never been, not even to spectate. So going there to race would be a dream come true. I'm dying to go back to a half mile race. I really enjoyed half mile racing. We only have one full half mile pass in the car. And this was like three years ago. The car went 196 and a half miles an hour. On my very first try, 40 pounds of boost, spinning tires, like on a, what I would consider a shit run. The car went 196 and a half miles an hour. The record in the US is I think 205 or 206. I'm convinced I can do that. The record for a Supra in the world is like 214 miles an hour done over in Puerto Rico. My goal is to beat that. I want to go over 215 miles an hour in a standing half mile, and I'm sure we can do it. It's not going to come easy, but man, when I set my mind to something, I go for it. So I do nothing by converting this car into an all out drag only car when I still want to do half mile races. I still want to drive it. I still want to do drag weeks. There's so many cool events I want to go to and things I want to do that, yes, we are making changes, but very slightly just changes i guess in the right direction but i don't want to ruin my combination and everything that i have going for me um so as far as engine i initially took the engine apart or i took it out just to take the road street to have them review it we've been running the aluminum rods for a year and a half now and although we've had zero symptoms of any problems um i wanted to get the engine checked maybe throw some new rods in it and get it back for the back half of the race season and like everything else man once i took it there i said you know what if we're gonna be digging into it I want to make some upgrades. So we've decided, the big news is guys, we've decided to go with a 3.2 liter stroker. My car was a 3.0 liter. So factory crank, factory block, factory compression. Uh, we've decided to go to, with a billet 3.2. I'm really pumped about that. Again, that should make the car that much more enjoyable on the street. It should build boost quicker, respond better, just more enjoyable overall. So I'm really looking forward to that. The second I posted the picture of the engine coming out of the car, lots of you guys started commenting, asking if I was going billet block. So billet block is sweet. Uh, I would love to go billet block. One is a lot of money. And two, for my current goals, wanting to go mid 7.5 or let's say 750s, want, having a goal of 730s, I'm convinced I don't need a billet block to do that. So I didn't feel like there was a need to blow that kind of money now when 
maybe going sixes isn't my immediate goal. I want to keep just kind of edging towards my goal. Like I said earlier, I've had four different turbos. I've had four or five different fuel systems. I personally enjoy doing things in stages rather than just buying the biggest and baddest and the biggest parts just to obtain this, let's say further away goal. I like, I enjoy the journey if I can say it like that. So the big news for the engine, we're going billet. Um, so when I decided to do, let me rephrase that, billet crank. <laughs> we're going billet crank, three, two liter. When I decided to do that at first, it was just, you know what, let's swap the crank, new rods and put the motor back together. But I actually sold my bottom end to a fellow YouTuber. Once, let's say I deliver it to him or grocery assembles it again, we take it to him, we'll do a, a collaboration. I'll show you guys his channel and his car. He's got a beautiful super as well, but he's gonna be getting my bottom end. So with that being said, we're getting a new block, um, a cast block, but a new block, new crank, new pistons, rods, billet mains. The whole motor is gonna get refreshed. And Real Street, the, the teardown, I showed you guys a little bit of the teardown video. Real Street's putting together a fully edited, really neat in, de uh, in detail video of my engine being torn apart. Guys, the motor was in amazing shape. Jay found minor little symptoms of wear here and there, but after what I put that engine through, I really was expecting a lot more abuse to be noticeable. And the thing was in amazing shape. So stay tuned to that video as well. Um, so that's the deal with the bottom end. The transmission, I talked to Jason and we're gonna do the very best that we can. I know he's working his butt off to have a, I guess a stronger A340 for me for Florida 2K. So that's about three months away still. A billet input shaft is the ultimate goal. If I can have a billet input shaft, I'm convinced I can leave the nitrous on throughout the pass and run significantly faster, especially now with the better engine and the, the larger turbo. Man, I really wanna, I guess, run another personal best at Florida 2K. That'll be really, really neat. So stay tuned for that. But again, guys, cool things happening with the transmission, the engine. Um, I guess now that I showed you guys just all the fun that we have with the car, that's kind of why I'm going the route that I'm going, not going massively big on the turbo and not going over the top. Uh, I'm sticking to ethanol. I don't want to go methanol. I don't want an engine that's going to require crazy amount of maintenance guys this is the car that i can jump in at any time take anywhere um over the last let's say six or seven months i didn't check the spark plugs one time i didn't have to mess with the injectors mess with my fuel system i had to do nothing i do frequent oil changes and that's it when i say frequent once a month depending on how hard i beat on the car once every two months but that was about it man i had a car that i can take anywhere enjoy all year long um, I drove that car to Bradenton, 300 plus miles round trip. I went and ate something at Bradenton. I drove it to Orlando Speed World in the heat on a Sunday morning and went an 820 or an 830, drove it back home. Multiple times I drove it to PBIR, my local track. That's a 70 or 80 mile round trip and ran on it, beat it there and drove it back home. It's been incredibly fun this far and we're only getting started guys so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i know this video's format is completely different to what we're normally doing on this channel if you guys enjoyed it feel free to comment down below give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family um let me know what you guys think if you guys have any recommendations for the car or any other ideas one last thing i almost forgot the row cage guys i want to make clear i haven't necessarily been neglecting the cage i've just been very picky on who to trust with my car this car means a lot to me i've gone through many different sports cars from GTRs to Corvette Z06s to 350Zs, 240s, Cobalt. There's all sorts of cars in my history of owning cars and they've all been a lot of fun to me, but I've never connected with any one of my cars as much as I've connected with the Supra. I absolutely love Baltic Supra, man. This car is part of the family at this point. I'm very picky who to hand it to. A road cage is not something that I can have installed and if I don't like it, upgrade it or change it. It's something that's gonna stick with the car. So I've done my research on what shops to trust and who to take it to. Um, I've made appointments that have been canceled due to the COVID-19 and just changes that have happened with the shop. So I now have another appointment set for three to four weeks from now. So if all goes well, I am hoping to have the car cage very soon. So stay tuned to that as well, guys. I'll have more update videos on that. So I'll catch you guys soon. Comment down below. You guys know that I don't call you guys the race family for no reason. I respond and interact with you guys to the best of my ability. I want to say I respond to almost Every single YouTube comment, I respond to you guys on my social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, anything that I can do to help you guys with your builds, your cars, I'm all for it. So guys, look forward to seeing you guys at the next racing event and we'll have more neat videos coming up. See you guys soon.